Minus 25. Well, welcome back to my channel, Mispronounced Adventures. And I'm in Northern Sweden. It was minus 25 last night. And my coolant swap I did a few episodes ago, I didn't do enough. The van won't start. We'll show you what I've tried so far. Nice, 20 degrees here this morning whilst it's still minus 19 outside. Let's, uh, I want to get off soon, so let's get the preheater on. Bit frosty. Ooh. Engine preheater engaged. Let's just also see what sort of temperature it is. Minus 22. Oh, I've just seen this. Here's the old bottle of coolant I've not yet disposed of. The coolant has frozen. Yeah, that's the old coolant which was in the engine. So with a night last night, like minus 22, you can see the uh, water on the floor is just frozen solid. I'm going to need to go out and find why the diesel heater is not uh, heat turning on. It might have been because I had the, I opened the door to the so that was running flat out and they tee off the same thing. So they might have starved the other one with fuel. Well, quite the sight to wake up to, isn't it? Quite the sight. figure out why the van preheat is not starting. Right, there's the reason it didn't start, even with the new mix. It's, uh, well, it looks frozen. It's not actually frozen, it's slushy. But um, yeah, so the, the heater is turning off because it's not getting any coolant. I might have to drop out a lot more water and put some more coolant in. Right, that makes me feel a bit better. It's it's not frozen solid. But it's definitely quite viscous. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the heat gun out and I'm gonna heat up some things. Yeah, so the preheater works, it's just the coolant is uh gone slushy because it was even colder last night. Well, the engine coolant slushy. I don't really want to try and start it till the heat is, till the preheat has warmed it all up. So I've got a heat gun and my inverter. So it's only slushy, so I don't think it's going to need that much to actually get it um, back to a liquid again. It's going to heat either the preheater area and just the engine components in general. Right, this might be a bit of a long process. I'm gonna go put some gloves on. Right, don't massively want to do this, but the van should start because the transit's gonna start down to minus 22. And the coolant's not frozen solid, it's just slushy. So maybe the power of a two litre diesel engine turning the water pump might be enough just to move some of the slushy stuff just a little bit into the system. Because I think at the minute, the little pump in the um, heater can't move the sort of viscous, semi-frozen um, or slushy coolant. So we're gonna try and start the van, get the coolant moving a little bit, and then we'll try the heater again and turn it off. Okay. Well, that's 
excited to rough, didn't it? So we we'll try the preheater again. I don't really want to keep it doing that. It was hardly able to keep its um, hardly able to keep itself going. So it felt like it. stuck so well all I see is the engine coolant is currently slushy so I'm just gonna sit here the Sun is now up I think the temperature is gonna be rising a little bit today so I just wait for the engine to thaw out a little bit oh well. Bask in the sunlight, Yeti. Bask in the sunlight. My engine preheater, which is a Wabasta Thermotop V from a Land Rover Discovery, is just mounted under here, underneath the passenger footwell on my Ford Transit. All right, well, here's the problem. It's slushy. It's not frozen, it's just slushy. So I'm just going to have to wait for uh, this to heat up, really. Right, it might be a sign to make some progress. That coolant tube is 9 degrees and everything else is minus 17. Coolant tube is minus 11. Coolant tube is minus two. <laughs> Starting to get some heat moving. But yeah, you can see the issue is this one. It's a couple hours later and uh, still no luck to get the engine going. It is starting to warm up, however. It's uh, it said it should be by about six o'clock at night. It should be about minus five or minus three. So hopefully long enough like that will cause the uh, coolant in the engine, and which I guess is quite cold, to uh, start to thaw out. Um, when it thaws out, that means the engine preheater can pump round, can heat the coolant up. When the engine heat is pumped round, the van will hopefully start, but the van the battery is now flat. Um, but I have put the trickle, the trickle charger. I've changed a couple settings, so it should be pumping, or it should be uh, charging the starter battery. Only at one amp, however. I might see if I can rewire one of the battery to battery chargers. But there is enough solar that with the diesel heater on and the trickle charger um, running, that I'm not actually. Um, losing power i'm sort of maintaining about my 55 percent um however tomorrow morning will be a different story if i haven't got it started by then yes but we'll figure that out so what i think happened is the coolant's not frozen solid the coolant is just really slushy uh the d the pre-engine preheat is starting but it can't pump that coolant round because it's too cold. So that's a problem. I tried turning the engine over as you saw. It sounded really rough, so I turned it off. Maybe I should have left that running actually, but it sounded horrific. 
Um, and now there's not enough power to do it. That's fine because there's a trickle charger. I've got solar coming in. The other diesel heaters are on. I've got plenty of fuel and food. So I think what's going to happen is looking at the weather, it's heating up from the minus sort of, I think it's minus 18 at the minute. It's going to heat up today to about six or seven degrees. Hopefully that should thaw out the coolant enough um, so I can get the van started. Well, since I'm waiting for the warm weather, well, warm, the minus five weather this evening and tonight to come, warm the engine up a bit and uh, wait for the triple charger to start the, uh, to charge up the starter. But I might as well just go for a bit of a walk around the area and see what's around. Well, not got the van started just yet. Went for a little bit of a walk. Um, I'm sure I'll get there. Plenty of power still. And really, I just need, I think now it's to get the trickle charger to charge the starter to get it to turn over. <sighs> right, get a bit drastic now, isn't it? It's not gonna work though. Right, drastic measures. I'm going to rewire this. So I'm gonna swap those lines there and then swap the negatives, unplug that one. I'm gonna use a battery battery charger to charge the leisure system onto the starter. Temporary rewire done, good, so um, I'm going to go change all the settings on the Victron app. Right, this should be set up now, so I just plug this in. It's powered on, this should be now charging the starter battery. Let's go have a look. If I turn it on. Right, it's now charging the starter battery at 22 amps. So I'm going to leave that for a while to do its thing and hopefully that makes a difference. Right, it might actually be running. I'm not sure. This is normally cut out by this point and it's still, it's still going. Time to get the heat gun and see what's happening. Thermal camera. Yes, yes. It's working. It's working. <laughs> the bottom of the old engine coolant which was sitting in the uh, in the cab frosty right the preheater has finished Let's see if it will start. Wait for the glow plugs to do a thing. Oh, no problem at all. Right, I don't know if I've actually got no flaw or it's because I flattened the battery, which has just happened before. But um, 
let's leave it idling whilst I tidy up the back and get out of here. Oh, first I need to rewire all that because I need to charge all the power back up. Let's do that, then we'll go. Power door rewired. I can now turn them back on again. Time to tidy up and get out of here. Well, it's starting to snow. Well, engine is running and after it heated up, it turned over like there was no issues at all. So just shows the importance of engine preheaters. Let's figure out what we're gonna do about the coolant and uh, but firstly, let's get out of here and I'm gonna go fill the van up with some fuel because I'm about a quarter of a tank at the minute. Well, I'm back on the E4. I made it, you know. I'm happy I was able to fix that myself. Um, my life would have been a lot easier if I had my 12 volt uh, charger in, which I usually have when I'm in the UK, but I took it out for this trip thinking oh, I wouldn't need it. Uh, so I rewired the B2Bs in reverse, which was which is fine, they're all back to normal. So, yeah, things learned. There's a lot of work which needs to get done to vehicles to get up here, and so many different things. Whilst I imagine a lot of the Nordic vehicles, you know, they're used to it and come by that. Um, definitely, if, you want, if you're a Brit and you're wanting to come up here for this is sort of cold, then there's a lot of work to be done. The coolant one is surprised me because I, I would have thought that the coolant I had in it was enough with the calculations I did the other day. But hey ho, must be wrong. Um, coolant have a lifespan anyway, so it's probably not the end of the world if I go to a garage and just get them to renew the coolant anyway. And then for these conditions, because then I know it's going to be the right sort of uh, temperatures and eliminated that issue. It's interesting that the, the preheat the engine preheater wasn't the problem that fired up every time it just couldn't pump through the i guess the sort of congealing slushy coolant was the issue and in the end when i poured the remainder of that pure glycol down the tube where it wasn't able to get get out and the temperature rose a bit i think that made the difference in the end they decided to thaw out some of the uh the, the frozen bits which we got stuck in there. But all seems to be working well, engines up temperature. Yeah, problem solved. What a fun way to spend my morning. So that's pretty much gonna end this episode here and a bit of a learning experience and shows you how many things you've got to prepare for. The engine preheater is just so important to get the engines sort of running and keeping them in good healthy condition up here. The coolant was a bit of a surprise. I thought my coolant was gonna be rated for a bit lower, um, but it's not. So I'm glad that wasn't a severe issue. If that had frozen solid inside the engine, the water content would have expanded, would have expanded and could have potentially destroyed the engine. So I'm gonna get the coolant changed. Um, but the other things to consider, even though once the diesel heater was on and you felt that, and you saw that the engine started no problem, like it was a summer's day, um, all the other lubricants and the gearbox and in the differential, they're still going to be very cold. So go easy on it if you're ever planning up here and you're driving in cold conditions. Don't just get the engine running and then go drive off um, heavy on the accelerator. Give the, uh, all those other lubricants time to get a bit warmer. Here's a sneak peek of what we've got coming up in the next episode. Temperature's risen a bit. I think I can hear that there might be a bit of snow outside. <sighs> Just a little bit.
but yeah that's pretty much going to end this episode from me so thank you very much for joining me um if you're not already subscribed please uh, please do it helps my channel out if you've enjoyed what you've seen give a comment a like share it around and yeah i'll see you next time cheers bye